mean, let's be honest. I mean, who doesn't like a story about a red grape you probably never heard of that was named after someone who supported uh, the Nazi party that has some uh, controversy around it today because people are trying to get the grape renamed. Um, I, hopefully the wine's good. Welcome back to Drinking It In. I am your host, Chris Cassara. We are here to help you know more and drink better. And today we're talking about the controversial grape called Zweigelt. You can kind of see it in this bottle. Zweigelt, Z-W, pronounced Z. So Zweigelt is a cross it's a grape that was crossed between um, St. Laurent and Blaufrankisch, which are two grapes that uh, do really well in Austria, um, you know, by a gentleman named Fritz Zweigelt. Um, and so the story begins. There's going to be a lot of history in this one because it's really important and fascinating and disturbing and amazing at this all at the same time. Um, so the grape is, is grown mostly around uh, the Austria Slovakia, that region of the world, right? It's starting to show up uh, because it can be grown in cooler climates in places like the United Kingdom and uh, even in Washington state in the US, but for the most part, it's, it's Austria. Um, it's very popular in Austria and pretty rare to see uh, on, you know, in the US. I mean, you see a few bottles here and there, and if you're lucky, you see, see one on the wine list, but they're not that well, um, that well distributed and that well understood. Now, part of it is probably the name because it's sort of like, you know, the, the, the name doesn't have a, uh, any sort of ring to it, but it was renamed from Rotburger or Rootburger. Uh, so I'm not sure whether that would work either, but around um, 1975, the, the official rename from Rotburger to Zweigelt happened, um, you know, in order to uh, honor Fritz, Fritz Zweigelt, who discovered the grape, crossed those two uh, previous grapes we talked about. But more on him to come in a moment. Um, but let's talk about the wine, because I do want to focus on the wine for a few minutes before we get back into history and controversy and uh, support, his support of the Nazi party. Um, this particular wine, Christina, she's a uh, winemaker who um, works out of Austria. She has, I think there are five wines that she offers, right? Gruner Veltliner, Zweigelt, uh, an orange wine, a couple others. But, um, you know, natural, everything is with her is, um, you know, unfined, unfiltered, you know, all the stuff that you, that you love about a wine. This is a 2020 Zweigelt. So what I expect, and I'm by no means an expert in this, but I've had a few over the years. I'm not gonna smell it, I'm not gonna smell it. What, am I, what do I expect from a Zweigelt? Red fruit, right? Cherries, strawberries, raspberries. Some spice, black pepper, cinnamon, licorice, maybe even like some, some dill and um, uh, it, chocolate possibilities. Okay, so the wines are going to be high acid. They're going to be low to medium bodies with very little tannin. So they're going to be real food friendly. Zweigelt and a chicken, duck, you know, especially grilled chicken or something that's braised. It, um, you can drink this with fish. It's not going to overwhelm fish. And uh, it's perfect with a charcuterie. You get some meats and cheeses on a board, pour one of these and bang, you're in, uh, you're in heaven. But we cannot drink this wine until we uh, address the controversy around Mr. Zweigelt. So apparently he was a big fan of the Nazi party uh, way back when, uh, when it existed, obviously. And, um, you know, I've, I've even read some things that he sold out people to the Gestapo. Uh, he was uh, accused of a war crime, right? Um, stood trial, but then was pardoned. So there's a lot of, um, you know, bad stuff that goes along with this guy's name and up um, even as, as recent as 2015, from 2002 to 2015, the, uh, there was a uh, Dr. Fritz Zweigelt tasting uh, prize that was awarded in the Comtal region of, of Austria. Um, but finally in 2015, they ended that due to the criticism that started to build around the, you know, around his, uh, his legacy. So. Um, that controversy has continued 
And even in, and it got, it got pretty loud in 2018, 2019, where people were rallying around renaming the grape, but nothing has happened yet. Nothing's official yet. Everybody's still considering it. Um, my personal opinion is that I really would love to see this renamed because, uh, you know, the Nazi party was evil. Um, let's, let's taste this wine though, right now. Let's get into it. Again, 2020 Zweigelt from Christina Wines in Austria. It's very reminiscent of um, Beaujolais there, but there's an earthiness to this, to this wine, which is interesting. I didn't expect to, to get that. Let me see if that blows off a little. There's definitely some, some cherries in here. Um, they're a little dried, right? They're not as red as I would have expected. <clears throat> Maybe it's, you know, how she makes her wines and that they're a little, you know, all the natural, right? I mean, as natural as you can. So I'm getting a little of that earth note, a little dirt, a little whiff of barnyard, a whiff of Uncle Roy's barn. Like, you know, it's in the distance, but you're not, you're not close to it. And I'm getting, um, I know I mentioned dill as part of a possibility in the profile, I'm getting more of a rosemary uh, element here. They're coming for me. All right, let's see what it tastes like. Okay. There's a little bit of an effervescence to that on the tongue. It's almost like tiny, tiny bubbles. Frizzante. Nothing like a champagne or Prosecco, but just a tiny, tiny whiff of bubbles. The flavor just evaporates, actually. That's a shame. Um, right now, there's not much staying on my palate um, at all. Let me take another sip on that. Yeah, I mean, there's some tartness now that's that's coming up. So those dried cherries that I was describing, more of a cranberry on the palate. Second step, that second sip is staying with me a little more. The tartness is definitely there. Um, this wine right now is is uh, and I just opened it maybe a half hour ago. Not giving me uh, this is not a good showing for for Zweigelt. We'll see maybe the next day or maybe a little later tonight, it'll taste a little better. I had a little time, more time with air and we get some the wine um, relaxed a little bit, but very thin. And like I was saying, this can be light to medium body. This is light body. It's like kind of, it's kind of like drinking water. Um, in general, maybe not so much this one yet, but if you like a Barbera, if you like Beaujolais, if you like Gamay wines, if you like Pinot Noir, Give Zweigelt a try if you're okay with um, somewhat supporting the, uh, you know, the origin uh, story, which is uh, pretty terrible. I hope you've learned, I know you've learned something out of the, in this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I will uh, look forward to seeing you guys again soon and uh, put in the comments if you've ever heard of Zweigelt uh, before and if you've ever had one to drink, whether you enjoyed it or not. Cheers. See you soon.